The lightning speed of one New York fast food restaurant owner has become a true lifesaver. Thanks to his quick action, a city cop survived the darkest day in American history. These two seem like long lost friends. You caught me off guard. But in fact, they were brought together under the worst of circumstances on the darkest of days. The day had a surreal beginning. The World Trade Center towers, just four blocks from Lloyd Frazier's McDonald's store, were ablaze. The fire came up this way because they're from the south. I, I, I knew there was serious trouble. After clearing out most of his employees, the towers began to collapse. And there's this horrible sound that the building makes before it comes down. It sounds just like a jet taking off. People ran screaming. The sky, it seemed, was falling. Frazier went out for a look and quickly realized his mistake. Down it came. And it, this, this avalanche of ash and smoke was coming up the street. And we made it inside. But outside, with nowhere to hide, was police officer Daniel McFadden. I see it coming over the top of the building. And that, but he can't see it. And so I yelled to him, get over here, get over here now. I heard someone say, it's falling, run. And like tunnel vision, all I saw was the door of McDonald's open. Once inside, day turned to night. The street darkened by the storm of debris. Frazier had saved Officer McFadden's life, but his work that day wasn't done. About 30 seconds later, you see a dim light come up to the door and just tapping on it. But those safely inside demanded the door stay shut. The people that were in the store were yelling at us. Don't, don't, don't open the door. They yelled, don't open the door. And Lloyd, without hesitation, opened the door, and in came a ghost. This was a ghost of a fireman. And then, within hours, Frazier got two McDonald's mobile units into the area to feed the rescue workers. Over 500,000 served. And I had a firefighter actually say to me, he said to me, because you're my hero. And I was like, oh, no, buddy. I go, you're the hero. And Frazier's store became Hotel McDonald's for dozens of rescue officers who sought a few hours to doze. Lloyd Frazier's become a hero to many at Ground Zero, especially to McFadden. Hey, you can thank me all you Save want, me pal. and another fireman. The heroes are down there in that horror. I just helped some people out in a tough spot. That's what I do. I'm Nile Rogers from the MP3 Dance Club. Yo, you're watching Tech TV. Digital has changed everything. People don't just play music. They don't just play the music back. They actually play with the music. Now, dig this. The cool thing about the Nile Rogers MP3 Dance Club is that it gives back-end users really what they want, which is cool music at a really low price and a bunch of fun applications. At the heart of the system is the PC DJ. PC DJ, what it's all about, is basically just think of it as virtual turntables. This now becomes your CD player, your video player, your turntables, your mixer, everything in one package that comes right on the CD. So now you get 12 hot cuts, and then you get the instrumentals and the acapellas, the vocal stems, the instrumental stems, all of that kind of stuff that you can mix together, flip, cut, beat, match, scratch, hip hop, do anything you want with it for the low, low price of zero. And you get your own broadcaster, which allows you to save your DJ sets, your own unique moves that's just your own. And then you can broadcast it over the internet, your own personal radio station. You can even plug in a mic and go, yo, 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 this is DJ Tony, whatever. And yeah, man, I'm the man. And listen to my mix of so and so. I mean, you can do all of that. Bang. When DJs are spinning, they'll put the records that they're going to play next, they'll pull them out and have them sitting up in their record case so that they can remember, okay, great, when this record finishes, I'm going to go to this and I'm going to go to that. So we knew that having 2,000 records in your case, how could you get to it quickly? How are you going to memorize it? So the PC DJ, you can organize your records by beats per minute, by titles, by artists. You can make any kind of subgroups that you want to make and put them in your case and have them preview, ready to go. Check this out. A kid sent me an email. He was doing a rave. He was playing a rave in his dorm up in Chicago. Somebody tripped the fire alarm while everybody was spinning and partying. And this kid said, hmm, let me search and look for every song that has the word burn, fire, hot, matches, or whatever. Within 10 seconds, he was spinning, burning down the house. They thought that he had pulled the fire alarm because he was so on top of it. Today's world is very exciting. I mean, it's. The possibilities are endless. Hey, I'm Nile Rodgers from the MP3 Dance Club. I'm out of here. Maybe you don't recognize this 1980s rock star now, but you definitely know his music. As Jerry Pinnacoli reports, he's got a new sound for the new millennium. 
This was pop star Peter Gabriel back in those freewheeling, fun-loving 80s when he and his high-concept videos like Sledgehammer were pounding away on MTV. This is Peter Gabriel today, at age 51, more mellow, and back to basics with his music, a beat and rhythm he's grown to love, all the way down to his Birkenstocks, the natural sounds of world music. Extra was invited to a special rehearsal of the group Gabriel's now playing with Afro-Celt Sound System, which blends African and Irish sounds, inspired from his travels around the world. In some ways, you know, I think what I do is pop music, you know, it has a wider range of influences than most. Losing weight's never easy, especially if you're not using the right meal plan. But John Kelly found one to diet for. You've tried the diet, followed the gurus, taken the miracle drugs, and you're still not as felt or happy as you'd like. I also tried the cabbage soup diets, the weekend diets, and, and all those kinds of things for weight loss. Mercedes Ellington is a New York-based choreographer and granddaughter of famed band leader Duke Ellington. She was overweight and overtired until she met Dr. Elizabeth Dane. We're all so different, we're all so individual, that a one-size-fits-all diet can't fit everybody's needs. Her disciples include folk singer James Taylor, Broadway star B.B. Newirth, and actress Angelica Houston. Now in her new book, Your Body, Your Diet, Dr. Dane says weight loss and good health are easy once you determine your metatype. Metatype is a word I've coined that describes six basic energetic patterns based on the energy flows within an individual's body. The book has this questionnaire to help determine your metatype. Based on that, there are diet plans to fit your profile. And Dane says the way you eat is as important as what you eat. One doesn't mix grains and meat, and one eats fruit mm, half an hour, 15 minutes before or after a meal. I was dealing with um, some in insomnia at some points, lower back pain. I was dealing with irregularity. Once Dane typed Ellington, she eliminated tomatoes, dairy, and eggplant from her diet. She also customized a vitamin regimen and encouraged yoga and meditation. It's been about five years now that I've been with her, and um, it's, it's really amazing the progress that I've made. They think I'm very magical. Once those yo-yo dieters get on their own individualized metatype plan, their pounds will be gone and they'll maintain their weight for life. And that's no magic trick. For more information on how to find your metatype, go to Extra Online. We're at extratv.com. Fifty-two miles an hour. It's the fastest I've ever gone down. That's fast. Speed to me is scary, it's fun, exhilarating, and it's necessary. Hair on the back of your neck stands up a little bit, and uh, it's it's wild. Coasting and, and attaining top speed and achieving an aerodynamic position is an art all in itself. It's something completely separate from the fitness of our sport. You catch a guy on a bike, just blow by. He doesn't see you, and all of a sudden he goes. What the sport means to us because of the disability is it's a complete, synthesized, simplified version of life. It's just you, the chair, and how fast can you go. This is the fastest chair in the world. I wheel like 15 to 25 a day, six days a week usually. Lift three days a week. Speed work, long, slow distance stuff, and a lot of hill work. Aggressiveness is proper training, good preparation. Confidence. At the end 
of the race, the most important thing is to realize the guy that, that wins the race is not the guy that's the fastest, it's the guy that slows down the least. When you're racing and, or training, the, the disability, like you said, is just stripped away. We're not disabled, we're super able, bottom line. David Blaine did it. The street magician pulled off yet another wild stunt, and we were there for the footage from his moment of impact. Three, two, one, stick it! Nailed it! A crowd of more than 10,000 gathered in Manhattan to watch in awe as Blaine fell more than 80 feet into a pile of cardboard boxes. Among those on hand were shocked jock Howard Stern and actor Christopher Reeve. It's about mental discipline. Physical discipline. Only E.T. has this exclusive 120-degree camera footage showing the Daredevil's position just moments before impact. More than 9 million viewers tuned into the ABC special to witness Blaine's 60-mile-an-hour plunge. He emerged from the boxes unharmed. I want to thank every last one of you, and this is just the beginning. God bless all of us. As a precautionary measure, David was taken away by ambulance to be examined by doctors. His representatives tell E.T., quote, he's home, he's resting, and he's doing well. This is um, thing on the ocean, right? I was a man that only used to surf. And then I saw these longboards, and fellas having a lot of fun on these longboards. When I saw that, I am a fellow that loves freedom. So I went to windsurfing. I'm a professional windsurfer. I windsurf on the professional circuit. Some of the fellas on the tour will call me Irie Man. Some of the media will call me Irie Man. And that's what I am, Irie Man. The slalom, everything is intense. You deal with a lot of speed, high speed. You're taking in every chop, every wind shift. You have to be on. The slightest mistake, you're down. When you fall, you can hurt yourself really badly with speed. And let me tell you, when you're going 43 knots and you fall, on the water. You just don't push and go in. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you do the dance. You're going 30 knots. You hit a wave five feet. How high you gonna go? You feel weightless. You feel as if you're in the clouds with the birds. gives me a, a very good rush. It just takes a lot of commitment and determination and a lot of pain, you know how it is. Because if you don't have no pain, there's no glory. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Tina Turner. Hey, where's the video 
chicks. Oh yeah. Six buses for just the crew. Three buses for Tina Turner's band. Two for Joe Cocker. That's a lot of buses. And this has been our home away from home for about nine months. A fabulous tour bus. A front lounge area. We have not one, but two refrigerators. Microwave convection oven. All important, Mr. Coffee. And we have, we have these fantastic Star Trek doors. Look, push the button, it opens. The first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is get off the bus and stumble into the venue and try to find a good place to take a shower. All of these cases come off of the big semi truck. We set up all this gear within about an hour. We set up this part, but it takes a little bit longer to set up the camera and the screens. Probably another hour or so. They have to check at this point in time during the day to make sure signal is communicating between all of the distro, the screen, and the video racks. Less than four times. <laughs> we provide two functions. We put all the images up on the screens that the audience gets, to, gets a good view of what's going on on stage. We also use the screen as a lighting effect. We have four cameras, four for this shoot. We have one front of house camera, which is primarily dedicated to Tina Turner herself. We have the jib camera, which shows the sweeping motion of the crowd and the stage. One guy in the pit on handheld to get the front and the audience reaction, and one guy on stage on handheld to get the backs of the, of the musicians and the crowd. This tour, the 24-7 tour, um, Tina takes us on the journey of her career. It's a lot more hard work than you think. <laughs> so one effects bank might be feeding one screen, and the other effects bank will be feeding the other screen. Mix in between the cameras, like that. Without this laptop computer, it would be really difficult to do this show. We use the computers primarily to talk to all the different equipment. Who the hell knows what we're doing here? We love the computer. The computer's called Artie. It's got a name. Artie. I love music, so there really can't be anything better than being able to be part of putting a big show like this together. The way Christine does video, people walk away from it really knowing that they experienced the whole thing. Um, today's day and age in the arenas, you feel like you could miss out on a lot by not being able to see what's happening. And the way she's cut the show, people walk away and they're very happy. That's entertainment! <laughs>